All right, guys. Welcome to the next episode of the Talk to Me podcast. Um, today we have Rachel with us, and just to give you a, a background, Rachel and I we met, I think, back in so back in 2016, if I'm not wrong. And funny story, I was looking for jobs at that point. It's kind of new to the country, and you know, networking my way through. And uh, that's when I stumbled upon Rachel on LinkedIn, and we met. You know, we spoke for a couple of hours. uh you know found a lot of things in common and but yeah uh really looking forward to this chat and uh, she'll be here with us super soon also uh give me feedback you know uh right in the comment section let me know what you like about the podcast what you don't um mostly tell me what you like about the podcast sorry no i need to be nice um but uh, yeah just you know things that you would want to hear about things that you personally are curious about and uh would love to include that in in the next uh, episodes yeah oh there you are oh hello hi how are you um i'm trying to eat cashew nuts i'm really uh, hungry um uh, yeah i was going to ask what you're eating cuz that makes me very hungry but um nothing that you need to be envious of um just a simple cashew nut are these roasted or just plain just plain yeah there's there is nothing exciting about this cashew nut um i tried okay yeah sorry no i'm just um i'm snacking i've literally just finished work um that's how this is supposed to be this is not a formal podcast anyway like okay Yeah, I should have picked up some food as well. But anyway, um I have my yep. some sort of tea. It's like a herbal tea. I don't know what it has. Some um, sort of tea. Yeah. Anyway, how <laughs> are you? Man, it's been long. It's been so long. When did we even last speak? Um has it been years? Has it been years? Um <laughs> I guess I left Canada in 2016. Hmm. So I can't remember if we've spoken since then. I guess social media is deceptive because I think it it sometimes makes you feel like you have had a conversation when you haven't. Yeah. Um and I know that we've had we've we kind of have fragments of chat. Um mm. but not really enough to exchange consequential news. Not that actually really anything consequential has happened with me. Um mm. apart from some moves, some different jobs. um yeah but um Go yeah on. i think the last we spoke was when skype was still a thing <laughs> is, is skype not a thing i mean i don't use skype um or it's become yeah. skype the business um, oh okay hmm. i think it died after microsoft bought it yeah i think it or or i think the pandemic kind of changed it zoom completely took over the world right like i think even before that it was still a thing but but it's not anyway not anymore it's all about google meet and and zoom mm. yeah so this, i mean i have so many questions for you it's not yeah. even i feel like it's not going to end but uh how was i think i'll jump straight into it how was your move back you know are you happy moving back to scotland or Well, I suppose that uh, I just need to unpack that a wee bit because I guess mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you're asking me what was it like to move from Canada to the UK mm-hmm. um, because I I did that and then I went to study in Denmark and mm-hmm. then I came back from Denmark and then I moved to Manchester and then I moved to London. Oh my god. And I've moved back to Scotland in the pandemic. Um yeah. Because course i had a death in the family so oh i um, didn't know that sorry to hear that who who was it my stepdad died um he had oh. a he he was already suffering from dementia and then he had a stroke and also fell down the stairs oh um, my god so if it sounds matter of fact it's just because i've i've now spoken about this so many times that it it's um you know it's more straightforward to talk about it but hmm. um i guess he had He had the fall and the stroke just as I don't know things were sort of starting to get crazy but um mm. I guess the virus was around we hadn't quite gone into lockdown um and then I 
I think um, I think lock I I'd arranged to come up to Scotland and then the government announced lockdown. Mm. I came back up to Scotland and then decided not to go back to London. So oh, wow. Um, so you yeah, it's, I mean, a, yeah, you've had a lot going on. Yeah, and, and I suppose to be to be honest, I feel like April was a really messy month. Like I, I was mm. angry and upset and mixed up and. Um, and now I'm, <laughs> I feel more zen about it. I've sort of processed mm. a lot of that. Um, mm. So, so it's easier to to reflect on. But yeah, I think April was a a very a very difficult month. Mm. Um, and is then of course it's, it's just been a roller coaster, really. Is it April when he passed away? Yeah. So it was, well, he he I think he he died at the end of March um and and yeah because it was just a a weird time because he had the he had the fall and the stroke Mm. I came back um he died and then I think I had my birthday the following week and then his funeral the week after that so Mm. I mean all these strange milestones that don't align with each other at all and um Mm. yeah I'm so sorry to hear that I had I wasn't aware of this. Yeah, I, I suppose this is what this is what you miss on on um, on social media. I mean, I, I remember when mm. I moved to Canada, mm. I I totally missed um, the fact that I um, actually a former manager had mm. lost someone significant to him, and I just I I just hadn't picked it up on social media. I just didn't know, mm. um, and you sort of feel that because you follow people yeah. on Facebook or on Twitter that mm. you're you know, you're aligned with their life, but it's not always the case. Um, No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's so much that you don't want to share on social media with everyone, right? So you got to have that sort of um, filter when it comes to sharing your posts. So, well, I, I try and be, I try and be sensitive. I mean, I think for all of this talk of self care, uh, (laughs) mental health, um, I still think there's a bit of a taboo about sharing raw emotions about sharing something when you're in the thick of it like most of the people I know who who do disclose that they've um they've been suffering from poor mental health tend to do it when they're in in their reflective phase so they've already Mm. been through the messy stuff Mm. um and so you get the kind of highly polished synthesized version of whatever that emotion was but yeah um I mean yeah I mean certainly when there have been weekends where I've been sobbing or wonder or howling at you know wondering what I'm doing with my life or Hmm. uh, because it's also hard to move back um to your parents uh I guess later I mean probably at any stage after the age of 18 Hmm. um but also hard going from London to a small town in Scotland Hmm. um and just figuring out those those differences and and I think the fact that we we couldn't have a a proper funeral that um, we couldn't gather loved ones. I think that was that was very surreal. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, but That's I mean, hard. Hmm. we just we I guess we went through it at the beginning. So I think people are find people we know are facing that challenge now, and I just suppose that we've been through that. So, mm-hmm. um, and this was still the early days when you couldn't even gather what five or ten people at max. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was six people. Um, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. You know, we re- we read about all of these news, uh, and we just, I guess, if it doesn't happen to you, you don't really know the gravity of the situation. So, yeah. man, that's hard. Wow. Yeah, it, it it was. But I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, God, I, I've. I feel like now we're in December of 2020. I know so many people who've had something, uh, you know, a hard life event in one form or another. You know, we have friends hmm. of the family who have wrestled with cancer or different yeah. operations or breakups or redundancy. I mean, you know, I'm sure what, what we have been through has been awful, but Mm. I mean, I feel like most people have been through something challenging. Yeah, for sure. If not physically, uh, a lot mentally, I can promise you that. But uh, it doesn't compare with um, loss of a loved one. I mean, that's 
that's i can't even fathom that um what was he like uh tell me a little bit about him what was he like as a person some fun um, memories um yeah well he, well he wasn't he wasn't always easy um i i think a strong personality uh i think um yeah quite strong world uh mm. i think a quite a maverick also like playing devil's advocate um mm. he had a very interesting career of you know a bit of time in the air force he'd done some oh, wow. some lecturing he'd mm. done counseling um he'd also trained as an alexander technique practitioner uh so a man of many lives mm-hmm. um, i don't know if you've seen the tim burton's film big fish i haven't and i've not even heard about it i'm going to make a note for it right now big fish is it big fish yes he hmm. reminds me of um or the lead the lead character in that film reminds me of my stepdad bill oh i have um, to watch this now yes uh, cuz i guess bill also really enjoyed telling tall stories okay. so it was uh, it was very good at weaving fact and fiction together oh wow <laughs> i love that i'm going to i'm going to check this out give me a second i'm going to make sure i'm going to make sure i make a note of that um and i i also haven't asked you how how hmm. um i don't know well how has 2020 been how has it been since 2016 and we used to hang out in person mm. i actually i was just giving i was just doing like a an episode intro and i'm like you know met rachel in 2016 i wasn't sure of the year then uh, now you mentioned 2016 so that's that's when we met but uh, it's 2020 has been <clears throat> I guess better than a lot of people. Um well, I know law- that you eat well for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been we've been really uh we always sort of like cooking at home. Uh when I say we I say that very lightly. It's mostly Shreya. But uh you know uh yeah, we've been eating well. We've been uh working out. We've never never fans of going to the gym anyway, so it's all indoors now and it's good uh every now and then we go out for a walk it's getting cold now but uh i think 2020 has been like i said it's been way kinder than it has been to a lot of people and uh just counting our blessings we're alive i think that's all that matters yeah yeah oh no absolutely yeah. i think so, um i decided to send christmas cards this year and i think Sam, I am going to tell my Thank friends you. they're important to me. Oh, it's okay. I wasn't fishing. Um, but but <laughs> but but of course every time I told someone that I was going to send them a Christmas card, mm. the almost instant reaction was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm we're not sending them or um, you know, I mean most people also said thank you. That's that's very nice, but um it makes you feel very old school. Um uh. because really nobody sends them for one reason or another. I love that you have kind of stuck to that tradition um shreya and i absolutely love writing letters and we haven't i want to say we were guilty of not doing it that often but we it's it's by default that we sort of look forward to your cards now every year <laughs> so if you want to send it twice a year that's totally okay you know mm-hmm. you can pick up another festival for all of that I, i i i need to swat up on more festivals yeah yeah but uh you all have you always uh, have you always been like this in terms of like so i okay let me let me say this for as long as i've known you uh we met a lot of of course we met a lot of people through you you're always this uh magnet when it comes to people uh when it comes to connecting with people building a community uh have you always been like this if not what sort of changed what prompted this oh gosh um i i don't know what i mean thank you that it's really nice to hear that um mm. maybe there was an element that was always a bit like that and then maybe because i did things like i read she went to art college after school but then i dropped mm. out and ended mm. up doing foundation in engineering mm. and and obviously that was a totally different way of thinking and um i went from a virtually all female environment to a virtually all male environment so there was mm. something about 
bridging disciplines and bridging communities that I think emerged then. Um, I think I, I have an innate, it's actually what, what classmates at design school called my host mode. Um, so I think there is something sort of genetically or, or nurtured into me, yeah. which means that it's impossible to inhabit space with someone else and not be aware of their needs. Like if they cough, mm. I, I'll have to offer them a glass of water. Um, if I hear their stomach rumbling, I will have to offer food. Like I, I'm just sort of wired to connect <sighs> with that. And I don't, I don't know where that comes from. Um, huh. And then I think it's also when I emigrated to Canada, mm. I was lucky that people, I didn't know anyone when I moved over and people came out of the woodwork, mm. um, you know, friends are friends and, and, you know, lots of people helped me. And, and so I think when I've, I don't know, when we connected and um, when I've met other people who've made the jump of moving countries, mm. it just, it just seemed instinctive mm. that you, that you reach out and, and, sh and you do, you also get a sense of, who are good people to connect with. Yeah. Uh, I have also occasionally reached out to help people who weren't actually very good at helping themselves. And then you back off quite quickly. You're like, no, I can't do good stuff here. <laughs> like there's no, there's no point. So oh. I think, I don't know, just in that weird kind of tentacly way, you go out and you connect with the world and you meet kindred spirits. Mm. And wonderful things happen. Yeah, and I love uh, the point about you know if someone's someone's hungry, you're gonna offer them food. And like, was someone in the family like this? I think probably my mum's quite <laughs> like that. Um, mm. um, that explains so, it. <laughs> I may well get it from her, yeah. uh, but then I, I think a lot of it is just I, you know I've met some good people. I mean, I think. Um, you know, maybe it's also thinking in Toronto, connecting with sort of makerspace communities. Mm. They tend to attract, well, they, they do attract lots of introverts, but they, they also attract quite warm, inventive, resourceful people who mm. don't like bullshit, who do want to make the world a better place. And I think yeah. it's, I don't know. It, it's it's yeah. It's just meeting people who haven't given up on the world yet, <laughs> and and but want to have fun in in making it a better place. Interesting. Do you easily invest in people though, um, or do you invest too much? I don't think I invest. I, well, I I overcommit generally. Um, mm. so I feel a bit knackered because I'm volunteering at the moment. So there are days when I feel a bit mm. stretched. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think I do that at the moment, but I think I've been guilty about that. Like some mm. days, I think when you pour energy into people, whether they mean to take that energy or not, but I'm sure you have conversations with people. Yeah. And some conversations leave you energized and some leave you a bit hollow. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's you, you build up an awareness over time of, who those people are and those people who give you energy you want to spend more time with and those people who take it away you kind of back off a bit yeah and like sometimes hanging out with some people is a chore and <clears throat> i learned it the hard way uh, very recently that uh, we were hanging out with a lot of people that we shouldn't have been hanging out with and we had invested uh, so to speak and we just couldn't call it off. And I don't know. I, I think that wasn't healthy. Now I'm like, you know what? I have a, I, I think finally in life, I have some sort of a filter when it comes to people. Like, you know, you should, should be allowed to choose your own people. That's it. Like you not, you can't hang out with everyone. You can't like everyone. <laughs> that's well, just. I, that's yeah. a great. Have you, have you read The Art of Gathering by Priya Parker? I've heard about it, but I haven't read it. Is it a good uh, book? It's a great book, um, but it is about being purposeful in who you hang out with and how you hang out with them. I can't find it hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's here. It's here. It's here. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> um, look, it's got post-it notes and everything. Um, oh, nice. Transmitting me. I like that. 
transformative uh, meetings, events. I know she's got a podcast and mm. uh, a website and stuff. So yeah, worth checking um, her out. Uh, but she was interesting because I think the way is that I don't know. There's all this talk on being inclusive and obviously being inclusive is a good thing mm. um, but but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should invite everyone to everything all of the time or yeah. that you shouldn't sometimes be deliberately and intentionally I think that's the right word um, yeah yeah ex- exclusive yeah and yeah well, why not right like you're allowed to uh choose who you invite you don't have to always make a statement about being inclusive i think yeah well it, it just means i think um, what did you, oh i forget what the i probably haven't got it open at the right place um there was a chapter in here about it was something like don't be a bob which is you know that kind of nice non-offensive person who turns up with a bottle of wine at an event but doesn't Ugh. really add anything they just don't, don't, they don't really add much um, mm. I guess, to, to the, to the vibe. Um, mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I mean, I think she, when she talks through some of the examples in the book, uh, mm. I think it's about, yeah, just being really thoughtful around who you've got in the room mm. so that you can create a safe space for people yeah. to share. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it also comes with, some some sort of people pleasing uh they just want to be the nicest person in the room i'm like i'm tired of that now oh yeah i'm done with nice people <laughs> and and also yeah no i'm not i'm not totally done with nice people i just think nice nice is one of those words a bit like sweet like yeah. if you want to be nice and sweet not me <laughs> uh, no i mean by all means you could be kind or you could be thoughtful but yeah um yeah. By the way, uh, if you have a hard stop, uh, let me know at some point, because uh, we can. We're going to continue talking until then. I will endeavor to give you my best headspace and Amazing. hopefully waffle too much. Um, but but I'm not going anywhere. It's dark outside. Yeah, <laughs> I am here. I am in the zone with you. Amazing. Um, I had been really, really looking forward to this one. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I know I'm going to say this in most of the podcast. That I'm looking forward to the chat, but I really, really have been looking forward to this one because it's more than anything. It's like catching up with you after so many years, and it happens yeah. to be on YouTube now. So there you go. <laughs> oh no! Well, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, I, I I get more excited by the podcast because I'm not really sure I'm YouTube material, but um, you're fine. It, it, yeah, it's 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 lovely to see you. Always, always lovely to see you too. Uh, I was going to ask you what's. Uh, you said it's dark out. So I was going to ask you, what's the view from your window right now? Oh, God, sod all. Like the reflection of this room. Like I, I look into a conservatory, which I don't go into now because it's too fecking cold. Um, so really? I've got a reflection of books and lights that you can probably see behind me. So I'm in. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I'm, I'm still staying with my mum following what happened with my stepdad. And also, what's the point hmm. of being in London at the moment? Because yeah. you do anything and you're, it's just very expensive yeah. um so i'm sort of you know it's a curious position of i guess setting up as much as possible that i can work from home um yeah that's like a cozy like, space though i i think it is quite cozy <laughs> probably mm. cozy is a more polite word for cluttered um because no. all of my stuff is sitting on top of what um what was my stepdad's area so um oh, okay um, I have a couple of boxes of books and some bookshelves and things unpacked. Ah. Um, I have a, a makeshift standing desk. Um, yeah. Nice. And then a, yeah. So it's, I mean, at, at least it doesn't look too crazy in the sort of confinements of the screen, but yeah. there is chaos off screen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, cozy in the purest form of the word. Uh, it does look, <laughs> I've, I've seen, trust me on, on bad days, our space is insanely cluttered and like, you don't want to see us in that clutter. It's just, it also, I feel like it also impacts your headspace a lot, right? Oh, it does. Yeah. I mean, I, I in some ways I've got more space um, being up here mm. than I did in London. I mean, my, my flat was a great flat for the old normal, mm. uh, like pre-apocalypse life. Mm. 
Um, I lived opposite uh, a train station. Well, I lived near two train stations. I was in zone two, mm. um, lots of bars. It was super hipster. Nice. Uh, it was it was awesome, but horrible flat for remote working. Like there's also a really? restaurant, um, ven- you know, the view of ventilation shafts, oh much daylight. Um, you the know, industrial feel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. I mean, and and that's great. Maybe when you're just mm. eating and sleeping there, it's yeah. not much fun when you have to spend time there. But I mean, yeah. I have to say, your flat also looks. I mean, I like the prints going. Thank you. On. Yeah, it's, uh, very tasteful. Yeah, these are uh, all Amazon cushion covers. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah. No, but uh, you you've been to this place, right? Yeah, you did once. I, I think yeah, once, once. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> We had a was that the time where we had um a bar i think we had a barbecue outside yeah i know yeah. you uh you were raving about that meal for quite some time so yeah sorry i, I do talk about food a lot food's important foods yeah. foods everything <laughs> and which is a great segue to my uh my next uh point what's your uh what's your go-to dish so you you're having a horrible day and like if you just get this one dish and you're like yeah everything is sorted i suppose I do like a bacon sandwich, but God, that's such a British cliche. Um, I, I mean, it it depends because maybe a bacon sandwich is a morning pick me up. I do mm. love Indian food. Like, um, I would, I mean, just well played. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I do. I mean, I, I would happily eat, um, you know, Indian food for supper each evening. I'm no way. Quite, yeah, yeah, way, way. <laughs> Um, and I'm also quite partial to just demolishing a jar of lime pickle, um, which probably isn't good for me, but I really like it. I get it. I get where that comes from. And you know what? I You're saying they're not good for you, but I have this placebo about certain things where if I have a piece of chocolate just before sleeping, my digestion is going to be perfect. It's bullshit. <laughs> but it works. It works every single time. You know, it's, it's that balance between <laughs> mental and physical health. You know, we've got a reward yeah. our soul as well as the body exactly yeah. yeah can i make a wrestling noise whilst i get another handful of cashew nuts yes you can no i'm gonna give you a company now i have almonds here okay okay um okay how was how was childhood wow that's a big leap um um <laughs> i mean it was it was it was fine um I I grew, I guess I was born in Birmingham or near Birmingham. And then I spent my childhood in the Cotswolds. Um, my parents split up when I was 11. So then my mum, my brother and I moved up to Carlisle. So um, that was that was interesting because, of course, if you're um, if you're from the south, you move north while you're posh. Um, you know, if you're from the north, you move south. Well, you're a bit thick. Um, and if you're English and you move to Scotland, then you're just, you know, resented or slightly hated. Um, really? I, no, no, not really. I, I, I'm oh. sure those words will come back to haunt me. But no, I suppose um, uh, must must filter, must filter. Um, no, no, keep keep the filters out. Um, I guess. I mean, I suppose when we moved to Carlisle from the Cotswolds I was 11 so Mm. and quite a self-conscious age Mm. when we moved to Scotland I was 16 again a very difficult age so um and these these are times where your accent really matters where people are like oh you know you're really not from around here oh Um, really yeah yeah I mean I I don't know I mean I I assume that's it's like that in lots of places um I hear you uh I didn't know this was the case in uh, in the UK as well. I think very much so. I mean, mm. um, yeah, I would say that we're still quite judgmental depending on where your accent is from. I mean, mm. I've always been aware that I suppose as I, I, I'm firmly middle class um, and I, I'm i aware when I'm talking to, I suppose, any other Brits, you, you just you mm. just kind of instinctively sense, you, you, you pick up bits of bits and pieces about class all the time and mm. I wish that we didn't have it and I suppose sometimes in Canada I would meet Canadians who would talk about this this class thing in in Britain like Canada was immune to it mm. but I think Canada 
maybe has status where it doesn't have class and I mean I'm not mm. an academic so um, I'm talking off the top of my head rather mm. from actually any in-depth research but certainly with accents in in, in Britain I, you it just felt like yeah you the minute someone starts talking you're mm making judgments about where they're from, about whether they have more money than you or less money than you. Maybe it was mm. because I moved from the South to the North. Again, the South, the, there's, there was kind of this association that if you're from the South, then you're posh. Um, mm. okay. So I think I've, I've always been quite self-conscious about my accent and what it says about me. And now I have this weird transatlantic twang that people think I'm Australian or something, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's entertaining. I think, I, yeah, and I agree with you. And I think fa accents are uh, extremely fascinating. You know, they're like the biggest giveaway of your identity and uh, the lack of it, you know, you know, especially when we like, in, even in our case, when we move uh, from a different country and, uh, you know, a lot of people try and pick up the accent of where your new home is. But I just feel like uh, if it's uh, if you're saying a lot of effort, then you're you're forcing it. Accents to me, but personally, are really fascinating, and I feel like people shouldn't try and get rid of them to sort of adjust in a in a place. So I, d I don't think I've ever consciously tried to get rid of my accent, but mm. I think um, I tend to I tend to be quite bad at sometimes picking up people's. Um, I don't consciously do it. Um, mm. I, someone once said it was um, the ability of having a musical ear. Mm. Uh, I don't know how much truth there is in that. It's a good way of looking at it. Um, I am full of like little pockets of knowledge that are totally ill-founded or uninformed by any particular depth. Yeah. Actually, that that brings me to uh, ask you: Have you ever uh, thought of writing a book? Uh, <laughs> with all that knowledge you've you've like we've spoken about a range of subjects and you seem like seems like you know a lot so um I don't I don't feel like I know nearly enough <clears throat> I don't think I'd write a book I, I still have some creative projects that I want to pursue mm. which um I'm really bad at pursuing because I overcommit to lots of other things um I, I did write, I, so I'm part of a writing group in London. Mm. Um, I joined, nice. I joined, but so, so yeah, with, with writing, um, just before I left London, mm. I had signed up to volunteer with a charity called the Ministry of Stories, mm. which focuses on creative writing for kids. Mm. And through that, I met um, a lady who I'd now call a friend who introduced me to a writing club in North London. So mm. we meet up every other Tuesday and we write about different things. And one of nice. the exercises that they set us was about writing about pandemic life in London. Mm. Um, and that they, we did that earlier this year. Now, it was a bit weird for me because obviously I left London. So I wrote about the transition from this quite intense urban life mm -hmm. to, to moving to a smaller Scottish town. Mm. Um, yeah, so, and, and that was quite a cathartic mm. process, yeah. Would you, uh, do you prefer living the country life or are you a very city person, intrinsically? Um, probably, um intrinsically I'd be more of a city person but I have to say um I do feel that 20 probably I mean uh, god I'm such a pandemic cliche mm. um because I'd like to discover gardening this year and talking about nature and walks and cycle rides um so yeah, they're all great things okay they are they are yeah. yes they are and I and I I also um, this year, and maybe it's because I'm sharing a house with a parent at the moment. That I'm like, mm. dear God, I want to buy a house, um, and I can only, um, I can only really buy a house in certain parts of the UK because obviously mm. we're really expensive. Um, Ireland, uh, where no one is regulating the housing market, and it's all a bit crazy. Mm. Um, so, uh, anyway, to answer your question, God, I should just answer the question. Jesus, no, I love um, this. Keep going. Uh, uh, um, people are like, just, just answer the question. 
Um, I would quite like a small house in mm. a medium-sized city where there is stuff going on. There is a train station. There has to be a train station to bigger cities. Mm. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'd like I'd like time in a city. Like I like the idea of living remotely, but still going to London to work sometimes because I like the cocktail mm. um, and the food and the theatre and all of that yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, this in 2020, I discovered gardening, and mm. the, I also quite like um, reading, writing, making. I'd like to do more making. Um, yeah. I've abandoned those roots and I need to get mm. back to them. Yeah. Because you were pretty active with the Maker Festival here in Toronto. Um, are you, how did that come about? Are you, have you always been like into making stuff? Do you enjoy making? What do you, what do you like making? I, well, I used to, um, when I was 18 and I went to art school, I originally specialized in jewelry. And then, oh, and nice. I, was, I didn't know that. No, oh, I thought, yeah, yeah. So, we need to have a conversation <laughs> offline about that. <laughs> okay, right, you're on. Um, yeah. Um, and maybe if I come over to Canada, we'll, we'll do some making. Um, yes, Shreya would love that. God, she would love that. God, um, mm. yeah, I feel like we are scratching and clawing our way through 2020 to the promised land. Yes. yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but uh. I've always been, I think I was quite artistic as a kid. Hmm. Um and I loved, well, I suppose I, I quite liked fashion, but I didn't, wasn't very good with the culture that comes with fashion. Um, so, hmm. and jewelry was kind of good because it was 3D structures around the body. Mm -hmm. So it was quite an exciting space to work in. Hmm. Um, went to do quite a conceptual course in London, got super frustrated with art school for lots of reasons. Hmm. Uh, and then I dropped out and went and did a foundation in engineering because I was interested in electronics with jewelry and wearable computing. Um, mm. And I just felt I was not getting the practical support that I wanted to make mm. my ideas. Okay. Um, and then I ended up going down a completely different track. Yeah. Interesting. And w what would you, would you want to get back to jewelry, for instance, or do you want to try your hand at something else? I'd like to get back to jewelry. I mean, I've got just as I talk to you, like, I've, well, I've got jewelry that I bought behind me. I've yeah. got um, bits of wood that I collect off the beach. Um, oh, nice. Beads out of. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know much about this process that makes this really kind of amazing black and white marbled effect. Um, oh, wow. So, so there's a, a beach um, that's about 11 miles from here where this kind of driftwood um, is just, God. it's just there and I take it. <laughs> and it makes you happy. You know, it look does. at it every day. Yeah. And I look highly hilarious because I cycle to this beach. So whenever <sighs> I'm on the way home, I've got like branches sticking out of my rucksack and attach the bike. Oh, um, nice. The amusement of the locals. Um, yeah. That so, makes for quite I, an image. It, it does. It does. Mm. And it's not very efficient for cycling. Yeah. Really shit wind resistance. Yeah. 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 It works out though. Uh, your uh, cycling reminds me your Instagram bio is your, your Instagram handle and bio to me is very interesting. So something temporary for now, I want to know what, where that name came about. And I'm going to read your, I'm going to read your bio because I'm very interested in this lady of strong opinion, gut nerd, warrior and proud citizen of nowhere exploring human connections this in particular is what something that i'm very interested to learn about where did where did the name come from come from first of all oh, the, 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 okay um i think it's because i i'd moved back from so when did i so i used to have a an instagram handle called human plus design yes i, I remember that hmm. and um but i think i'd accumulated 6,000 photos on Instagram mm. and I as a friend of mine had been hacked recently I just felt that as a body of life data I got really nervous about having that volume of images online so I actually mm. I sort of I downloaded all of those photos um, mm. and then closed the account and then okay. I think like, I use Instagram as a kind of diary tool I mean I I try not to um 
you know, filter it or gloat too much. Mm -hmm. Like it's not not really about me having a wonderful life. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just about me making a record of things that I'm doing. So there's something temporary for now. I, I think maybe I didn't, I still don't quite know where I, where, <laughs> where I'm going to be based like I still feel transient mm. and and also mm. because I hate the I hate all of the the noise around personal branding and about what you should call yourself and I didn't really mm. I haven't always wanted to be Rachel Lane but I didn't mm. really know what what the handle should be and and something temporary for now just it, it just seemed like a good placeholder name um like you said, in transit. I like, yeah, in that's. Transit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And you're a warrior. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, God, I'm a notorious. I mean, my parents are both warriors. So I was mm. doing. Um, mm. I've got genes for it. Um, huh. um, but I, I, I like to think that I can also. I can also laugh about it. I mean, I was talking to a friend recently about the cult of positivity and I, I I don't know if it's my curmudgeonly prickly nature but I, I just oh I just hate the word positivity I'm like oh just an, enough already um I don't want to be yeah sorry yeah phrase for <laughs> oh no okay sorry go on I just feel like the mantra of you know let's think positive and like you know it's it's not it's not always um you can't force it no you can't force it. and so <laughs> You just need to if something's shit you just need to say it shit sometimes you need to be angry you need you need the full range yeah i'm all about the full range um uh so i do worry i i say that i think i joke with friends that i'm emotionally porous so you just you just know what's going on with mm. me it, it's all it's, all, it's all on your face yeah but who what, what do you worry about the most is it like work do you get worry about work do you worry about life <laughs> I sort of do worry about work, but it's more like, um, what if people think I'm shit at my job or mm. what if I don't do a good job or what if, what if I don't have, you know, good ideas? Um, sometimes I have worried more practically, like what if I lose my job money, obviously mm. 20, I've been mm. furloughed at that time. So that was top of mind. Um, you know, sometimes I worry, mm. sometimes I feel lonely. That worries me. Okay. Um, I worry about um, parents or my brother, who's a nurse in A and E. I guess I suppose it's it's ER. ER, um, ER yeah, that's what I had in mind. We we actually can't see a lot of him at, at the moment, um, mm. uh, and then my dad doesn't really travel, so I don't see a lot of him. If if I if I if I do see him, it's because I yeah. travel south. That must be really hard, though. I mean. I cannot even imagine what frontline workers are going through at the moment, particularly in, in the UK, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a hot mess, yes. Um. Yeah. yeah. You know, please uh, thank him from from my side and from everyone everyone in the world, really, you know, for, for whatever they're doing right now. Yeah. And, and um, as I've, as I've said to to a few folk here, you know, we we did we did clap and we banged pans. We will nice. also vote yeah. when politicians who give you know fair pay to frontline workers and actually you know uh, really follow up on promises and um, mm -hmm. yeah. So so making sure that we thank those frontline workers in a way yeah. that shows our respect. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So there are all mm -hmm. sorts. Um, things. I mean, I don't know if I worry about things. Actually, no, I probably do worry about things more than some people. Um, mm. But yeah, all sorts, all sorts. Yeah, nothing and everything. Um, what What did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh, uh, well, I did find a really embarrassing piece I'd written. I must have been about 14 where I was like, I want to be a high powered businesswoman. And uh, now I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed by that. Um, but it's also entertaining. Laugh, cringe, laugh, cringe. Mm. Um, so I probably I wanted to be an artist. Um, mm. oh, such a cliche. It may be. I also dabbled or thought about languages at some point. Mm, okay. um, I liked French. Um, what else did nice. I, 
quite enjoyed English, so possibly journalism at some point. But I mm. also think, and this is a conversation that I have with my mum now, I, I do think my parents were a bit sexist that they channeled my brother into science and they channeled me into art. And actually my mm. brother is really creative. And I've always, I've also enjoyed the kind of um, analytical side of research. Mm. I now get to do in my job and I sometimes think that maybe they when I grew up which mm. you know wasn't that long ago mm. um, that it, it just felt that there wasn't the same um, tolerance or capacity for mixing art and science you were mm. one or the other mm. uh, so I think when I dropped out of art school because uh, I, I mean when I did that my family were like what the fuck are you doing you hate math <laughs> Um, and it's true. I Do did you? hate. Uh, yeah. Well, again, I think so much of it is 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 about how it's taught. I think mm. uh, some of the teaching that I've had, both at school and uni, was terrible. Was, was really terrible. So, I, you know, of course, you're not going to love a subject that's taught badly. Yeah. I mean, uh, sorry, another book recommendation, if 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 that's okay. Got um, my his, notes ready. In, okay. Go for it. Johnston. Um, he's like the father, he's like a father of improv. He um, oh. wrote a, a great book on um, a sort of improv and education. I think he originally trained as a teacher and then sort of got into improv and mm. running workshops um, for, um, I guess, actors. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's he's got lots of um, really great stuff about teaching and, and learning. And I think what's nice about the book is he talks about exercises that he tries. Mm -hmm. And then what works or doesn't work and how he pivots. So it's kind of like rapid prototyping with people. Um, oh, nice. Patient context. But he he taught, one of the things he says is that, you know, we, we think about, oh, I'm going to butcher the quote. Um, <laughs> this is so bad. Um, but it's something like, you know, we think that um, the difference between a good and a, a bad teacher is just that obviously the good teacher is more effective, but, mm. but that we don't, sometimes put enough emphasis that bad teachers are really detrimental like they don't just yeah. um it's not just that their impact is weakened it's just that they can they can do long lasting damage yep and so i think you know there were things that happened at school and at uni that really put me off hmm. that were sim that were as much that were less about my ability mm -hmm. to to do science and maths and they were with the teaching and how pupils are identified for their talents. And I, I completely relate to that. I've had a flurry of bad teachers. Uh, maths in particular is my nemesis uh, or used to be. Uh, thankfully, I have a life partner that is basically pushing you to pick it up again because I feel like it kind of stays with you. Uh, Yes. You know, like even uh, even in other things that you do. So, so I even picked up a business math course uh, recently, which I should pick it up again. I dropped it. But anyway, uh, no, but <clears throat> like bad teachers really have an impact deeper than you can imagine. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Were you, uh, you, you spoke a little bit about, you know, worrying if someone likes you at work or someone likes the job you do. Um, do you how far do you seek validation uh, not, not very far i mean i i, mm. I, I suppose I, I joke that um i have this un, this unhelpful pairing of mm. qualities where i speak my mind but then i worry excessively about it afterwards and it would be easier to be someone who speaks their mind and doesn't worry about yeah. it, or just doesn't speak their mind yeah um, but no i i i I don't, I don't need to, I mean, actually now I'm off an age and hmm. I have enough awesome friends about me that I already feel validated. I still suffer a bit from imposter syndrome at work, but I was thinking I was, we had this conversation at work recently and um, I was thinking about an article that a British friend in Canada hmm. had shared on imposter syndrome and it was about um 
we talk, you know, lots of people, you know, claim that they have imposter syndrome, but sometimes it's not imposter syndrome. Sometimes you are just at the bottom or the beginning of a learning curve and mm. you're not good at what you do. That's not mm. imposter syndrome. That's beginner syndrome. Um, so, so it doesn't help to have everyone going around, oh, I've got imposter syndrome. Um, and mm. then maybe as you get older and you get more experienced, it's easier because you're like, actually, no, I am good at this. And that's something that I, I think I figured maybe more so with female friends along the way that I think in, in our 20s, maybe we encountered more confident, you know, to be brutally honest, white guys who yeah. were full of how great they were mm. and it was intimidating. And then I suppose as we've moved through our careers, we're like, hang on, actually, we're capable, if not more capable than some of these people. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're worth um, investing in ourselves. We're worth pushing ourselves. We're worth the salaries that we're asking for yep. kind of stuff. So that's got a bit easier um, mm. as I've got older. But of course, I also still worry about being female, about... Mm whether I'm too young or too old for a job wearing I mean in, in Toronto I mm. was told by a recruiter that I didn't wear enough makeup so there are things like this that come up oh. as well yeah still still mm. happening still happening but I don't care I don't care wait still happening as in you face those incidents in the UK or Denmark I've never had that issue I've never had that issue in the UK and it shocked mm. me um at the time in Canada, but also in that way where I think it's like when you when you have a conversation with someone who puts you down, mm. but in the moment you're so shocked that someone would say that. And I don't know, you know, it could be something sexist or racist, um, you know, or homophobic. And it, you mm. just in that moment. And mm. then you get home and you're angry and you're like, that was totally inappropriate. Yeah. Um, but I, I know I haven't I haven't faced that. And I think that was something that maybe took me a bit by surprise in Toronto that I felt that there were um yeah. I encountered some con some quite conservative attitudes that I wasn't expecting. I've heard this uh this particular makeup point I've heard in uh, in industries, you know, such as hospitality, aviation and whatnot. But I'm here to do my job, I'm gonna do my job. Like back off that's that's really sexist yeah i mean i it hmm. shouldn't matter but it, it does i think we judge people hmm. all the time by how they look whether we rationalize it or not and i think i mean certainly advertising which um i guess a sector i mean i've sort of moved sideways i was in advertising i'm now in design so hmm. the, the, there's a lot of overlap between the areas but they're different hmm. um and uh, I think, oh, God, God, advertising was, yeah, was was ruthless and was very looks oriented. Yeah, even uh, even the non customer facing roles. I think it just attracts it, it attracts people who, on one level, on one level or another, hmm. are focused on image. I mean, that's yeah. advertising the whole scene so hmm. um, I, i'm not yeah not oh gosh the, am i gonna say anything that gets me into trouble probably not no um i hear you yeah <laughs> and and to add some context to that uh mad men is one of my most favorite shows and um i went to this job interview once and the guy asked me what is your ideal workplace and i said as long as it's not like mad men I'll be okay. I got the job and it was similar to Mad Men. <laughs> but... uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, sometimes I think that show is funny for a reason and, and because, you know, even though it's what it's said in the 50s, 60s onwards, but it's it's still very topical. It's still very current. That culture is still mm. prevalent. So I think it's slowly dying out. I think we, we recognize it for the toxic space that it is. Yeah. And we're giving it less kudos. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Are you happy? Um, life in general? Life in general? Um, probably not. In, in, in all honesty, no. I want my own place with, you know, I want, I don't want to live out of boxes. Um, I don't want to stay on a sofa bed. Um, my hmm. mum is awesome. Hmm. Um, I also, I don't want to stay with a parent. I, I, you know, so I think that's, that's top of mind. 
I want to feel the economy stabilize. Hmm. I think, um, obviously, I've been furloughed for some of this year. Yeah. Um, I'm also volunteering with a charity. I'm aware that across the board, these have been really tough economic times. Um, you know, even even though I'm still, I mean, I'm I'm fully employed at the moment and I'm very busy, but with you know. I suppose when I have been furloughed, when you're furloughed, you can't apply for a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it very difficult to commit to anything. So I think, um, I feel like I'm I'm waiting at the moment. I'm waiting to see where all of this is going to net out. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, coupled with the fact that the UK is just such a hot mess at the moment. I mean, what a yeah. giant luck it is um, between Brexit and our handling of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, so now that we have dug a giant hole for ourselves, um, we're just going to have to wait to see where this where this nets out and and see what happens. So I'm not yeah. unhappy. Hmm. I would like to be closer to friends. I would, you know, yeah. I want to be able to have you know friends around. I want to be able to um, go out for lunch or dinner and not you know panic because I've forgotten a face mask or not yeah yeah be out of the restaurant by eight o'clock because there's a curfew yeah yeah so there's like certain certain elements of of your life that you're not happy about uh which is completely fair which is always going to be the case at any point in life but as a are, are you proud of who you are or who you've become as a person uh, yeah i would say generally yeah i mean you know I, I like to think of work in progress you know there's still hmm. there's still work to be done hmm. uh, um but um yeah i would i would give myself I, i'm gonna give myself an eight out of ten that's massive yeah that's yeah. great yeah are you, hmm. are you just to play the question back at you i love this part and I'm super happy. Uh, I think I have, no, no, I don't think, I, I'm sure I have everything that I want in life. Are there certain aspects about my own self that I would kind of like to improve upon or, or change? Yes, 100%. But uh, by and large, I'm super happy. You know, I have an amazing wife. I have a great family back home. Um, Well-fed, you know, living in a country like Canada. So might seem like a cliched and canned response, but uh, I am super happy. Excellent. Yeah. Um, but uh, who do you who do you talk to when uh, things don't things are not going right? Who's your confidant, so to speak? Um, well, I'm probably close to my mum, um, and then I also have um, I have a, a few good friends and in Edinburgh and Glasgow who hmm. um who are yeah who have been really awesome um I mean um I guess I've known them for I mean I've got you know a friend who I've known for 20 years I've got other friends who I've known for you know 10 12 years so you know people hmm. I've known for a good amount of time hmm. um yeah so these are the people that you sort of express completely everything like freely, you know, without the uh, fear of judgment. No, I, I, I don't. I mean, mm. no, I mean, I am, um, I do, I suppose I talk to them once I've processed it. I'm wary of sometimes talking about things that I'm nervous about when I'm vulnerable because I'm extremely sensitive to other people's reactions. So mm. I have to, very careful when I feel vulnerable hmm. not to open up unnecessarily hmm. um and I and I think also you you get to know which of your friends I don't know I think everybody has friends who are good time friends bad time friends mm -hmm. friends who always host the parties friends who always attend the parties so you know who you can go to for what hmm. um but I tend to open up to people once I've gone through um, something troubling rather than, and I don't, I don't really want to burden people. I think you particularly, you have to be careful this year because if you've got empathetic friends, hmm. they absorb your energy. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I, 
you know you don't want to shit on your friends either hmm. uh, so i think it, yeah it's you 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 need to be careful careful with the amount you share or the amount you express well and how how you share it and and, and hmm. because i suppose when you've synthesized something you can share it in a way that you're like yeah this has happened to me but it's okay cuz i've i've processed it but hmm. you know like in the thick of a breakup or something and mm. you share it well then mm. you've kind of offloaded onto someone so mm. you know you're you're you, yeah you've kind of distributed that burden and to your point about uh, someone being an empath and absorbing that energy i completely agree with you on that um but i feel like it's it's still important like i know there's a i know you can't completely share your heart out every single time because you got to be you know you like what if what is the other person going through in their lives but uh, it's good that you have you know a bunch of people that you can go to um when things are not going right but uh, do you cry how often do you cry um well i cry a a, a you cry easily do you cry at the drop of a hat um it, it depends like i I cry yeah I cry a lot around the TV like at the sad stuff yeah I cry then um mm. probably don't cry I normally cry when I'm angry um that's more of a the yeah sometimes maybe it there tears of frustration and and, and perhaps mm. it's uh, I'm trying to think what I've what I've got upset over this year sometimes mm. um power dynamics sometimes if you can't hmm. if it's frustrating and you can't express it easily or openly then that that tends to result in a lot of emotional energy hmm. which results in fatigue which results in tears got it so you let it all out every now and then oh hell yes no it's it's nice. it's not being kept in yeah hmm. for sure uh-huh. all right this is going fantastic i'm loving this uh this feels like it's never going to end because there's too many things to talk to you about uh do you believe that you sort of manifest your own reality and are there things that you manifest easily and things that you completely are unable to manifest easily it's more like law of attraction that sort of stuff so in terms of making things happen so if you think you're going to uh, make something happen does it happen you know do you believe in that Oh man um to give you some context i am really bad at i'm i'm actually really good at manifesting bad stuff if i think that something's not going to work out if i build it up too much in my head it's it almost always never works out so no i i mean i can i can see that and i do try and counsel i i, I mm. know when i counsel myself not not to go to the, those dark places mm mm-hmm. I think I'm I'm also aware that there are things like I have a, a sort of creative project that is on the wall behind me that I need to finish and I'm oh my god this has been um haunting like literally haunting me for years and mm. um I've kind of followed a red thread in different iterations through evening classes and design school and stuff and I still have not finished this project and I'm conscious hmm that really is you know it's within me but i i would also argue that it's not just the time that you need for things it, it's headspace so i mm. think even though i've been furloughed this year um mm. i think first furloughed um because i'd never been furloughed before it was mm. a very it was a very strange feeling i felt very guilty so i i volunteered right left and center and i did courses um mm. and i said yes to things and i did community work and um and actually if if um i was followed again like like if i had that time again i would just be more selfish but sometimes i, I don't know so much of this assumes a rational mindset which we hmm. we don't have um i i think maybe yeah maybe i i suppose i'd refer to that as being fatalistic and i think you can be hmm. fatalistic to a degree but you also make your own luck um hmm. although even that's complicated because yeah I've done things like moving to Canada. Hmm. Back to design school as a mature student. Um 
and I made those things happen but I was also in a very privileged space like um had I not had savings or actually when it came to design school be also been left some money that I would never I would never have been able to afford those things so hmm. uh, it's it's a whole mixture of attitude luck um um and privilege I, yeah. I think um yeah no, that's, that's a good way to put it um is it safe to say that april this year through through now is that the hardest phase of your life no i've had lots of i mean no i think there have just been different hard phases um i mean advertising was grim at time hmm. um moving to canada was sometime was has definitely been hard hmm. um, i and, and but but then it's all relative uh hmm. like i had I think sometimes um, when I was critical of some things, some aspects of life in Canada, mm. um, I remember a friend from Venezuela just basically saying, well, you've never lived anywhere where you've seen people shot in the street. Um, and you, mm. you know, you actually, I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, really I hadn't lived. <laughs> um, yeah. So I found mm. working in Canada much harder than I expected and I found it to be a more conservative market now I've hmm. got lots of immigrant friends obviously um uh you know you're one of them and n- mm-hmm. not everyone agrees with me um uh, and I think some people have more a more positive experience than I did but yeah I think I yeah I found it much more conservative uh yeah and I won't <laughs> probably won't go beyond that um yeah anyway. yeah keep the controversy at bay right <laughs> yeah. um so yeah. so I, I but i i think you hmm. you only really have ever two choices in life you you either sink or you swim and hmm. if you i mean if you want to keep going you keep fighting you keep swimming so hmm. you you learn from your mistakes and you get through it so um i think you know going back to um study has been hard but i mean this is all relative i mean again yeah about examples of my friend saying well you haven't seen anyone shot hmm. um, and um you know i think about some of my friends who've come from um you know different places that they've come from war zones and um and have gone through horrific hardship and i've never yeah. faced that. but also hmm. as i remember once discussing this in a, um a counseling session and 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 uh, being assured by my counselor that you you are what you are so yeah. i come from a white middle class background in the UK mm-hmm. and I be aware of that bias and privilege yeah but it's also what makes me me yeah um honestly i've i i i've used this example uh, myself uh, when i see that people are sometimes privileged and you know i'm guilty of saying the same thing you know but i feel like it's unfair because your reality is your reality right like i can't put you in a certain situation if you haven't been in that situation you haven't been in it simple as that so so yeah i understand uh, i understand what you're saying i don't know much about um your pre canada life and i i don't know how hard things were before canada i, I don't really know how you know things have been hard in canada i mean you've indicated that, that you know actually you have very good life yeah. so things aren't hard at all um but what were your hardest life lessons in terms of maybe in in moving countries or you know in the life you left and the life you have now so we had a significantly privileged middle class life in india um and you know i i don't know if you know this i was living in canada in even in 2007 and 8 I was a student here and I made the gory mistake of going back to India. Um and nothing against India but it's just that once you are sort of used to a certain certain life um once you have a system uh in place and then you completely go back to your old old roots it wasn't pleasant and you know we had a we had a tough time getting back here. Uh I don't know how familiar you are with with the immigration side of things but we had uh, there was a program called federal skilled worker program 
And that was the last year of the program. We tried a couple of times. We didn't get through. They were like professionalists. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shreya's and my profession, they were not in. Like we weren't falling in the category. So we would have possibly never made it here. Uh, but, um, you know, as luck had it, we had something related to advertising and marketing. And it it worked out. So I'm really happy we made the move. Um, as hard as the first, I guess, few years were, as you're familiar, you know, with my, with my job hunting and my struggles overall with, with myself or with trying to understand who I am as a person that reflected in everything I did. Um, until, until I took stock and, you know, I understood that this is not like, I want to do something else. So I picked up uh, photography and, you know, uh, now I'm doing this. If I were to sum it up, uh, I'm glad we, I'm really happy we made the move because I don't think I would have been this person in India. Um, So what's the difference between you in Canada and you in India? I don't know how to say this. Uh, I feel like I relate to uh, people more here. And I feel like I can express more freely. We've been here, what, five years? And we went back earlier this year, right before the pandemic hit. And the first few days were, were a culture shock. Can you believe it? Like, this is, it's my own country. But uh, I just feel like I'm more at home here, if that explains anything. It does. It does. And I, yeah. I mean, I, I've never, I've never mm-hmm. been through. I mean, my cousin, uh, I have two cousins who are, are half Indian um, and um, I, I hear about their adventures and I, I would, I, I, now, I feel like I have quite a few Indian friends from different parts, but, mm. but they're all out of the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we carry a piece of our culture everywhere we go. Uh, we do almost everything Indian, uh, whether it's festivals or food you know uh, but we just take that piece with us wherever we go so if we were to move to say New Zealand tomorrow the India would still go with us you know but uh, I guess it was the living like there are other controversial bits that I don't want to get into uh, about living there but uh, that's why I don't like live streams because you know you can't take anything back yeah yeah so but like all in all uh, I am I'm a very different person than I was in India and feel like this country is more accepting overall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's funny because I think, um, I mean, in, I don't think the UK, I think in some ways Canada is more accepting the UK, mm. but I think it, I also find it, it easier, even, even though the language is the same, um, mm and there's some shared history, I still feel more comfortable, hmm. and more able to express myself here. And, and maybe because I feel as an immigrant, there's always this element that you have to be grateful for the for your new home. And yeah. sometimes I definitely didn't feel grateful. I felt angry. Hmm. Um, and, um, but I, I as, um, as the father of a Canadian friend pointed out, I think when I have been angry hmm. about so I remember him saying, well, the trouble is that you're comparing Toronto to an ideal. Actually, mm. if you compare Toronto to many other kind of global cities, mm. we, we're actually, you know, we are very inclusive and we are integrated and multicultural. Um, mm. and actually, we're, we're, we're doing well. And, and I think, you know, when he said that, I was like, OK, that's an absolutely fair point. Hands up. I was comparing it to an ideal. And I think maybe yeah. sometimes things that frustrated me is because Canada was so squeaky clean with its brand it's like look we're welcoming immigrants come over here come over here and actually the reality just wasn't that straightforward Mm. Um, but it's better than maybe the UK which is where we're like no just you know bring bring down the walls bring down the walls get out get out if you're not you know white and British I mean it's Mm. it's sinister it's creepy it's it's and it's absolutely it's ugly and it's not the country that I identify with hmm. but because it's my country I can say it's a it's a shit fest and yeah. that's that's all right of course it is yeah and uh, 
it's also your the kind of experiences you had here you can't uh, like anyone else's version of canada might be completely different and because if someone's had a, had a smooth sailing they'll not relate to you at all you know but maybe it's because i mean i i you know i came from this this middle class white background so yeah Um, with my middle class white ways i was like actually you know it's not all that and this is wrong and this is wrong and yeah. i remember Bruce saying um with my british accent that people would either think i was smart or arrogant um <laughs> what to do with that um so i mean I, god there are all sorts of nuances and biases that play into this and and yeah. i came to canada and i met you and i met i met shreya and i uh, honestly oh you know the the people that i've become friends with and stayed in contact with i oh it's it's incredible and, and actually yeah. yeah anyway i'm gushing blah 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 no no keep gushing i like this <laughs> um and that was amazing and i would never mm. take that back but i yeah. maybe it's they came from advertising which is all about pushing lines and boundaries and buttons yeah. and i feel that i could push lines boundaries or buttons in canada hmm understandable and you you got what you had to from canada yeah um my favorite question one of my most favorite questions and i'm going to keep that in every single podcast what is your relationship with money oh well it's probably better now than it's ever been um and i suppose the one of the advantages of staying at home with a parent in a pandemic when you can't go anywhere or spend money um is that i've saved um so um i can you know i've now got a deposit that i can put towards a house which is exciting nice congratulations well yeah cuz actually moving countries is really expensive yeah um, had obliterated my savings through mm. a and, and travel so um hmm. uh, now i feel a bit more like a responsible grown up and doing responsible grown up things hmm. uh, so so yeah that's that's been better i think i think i struggled i struggled for years um because i suppose um there's a lot of chat about pensions and the importance of saving and and mortgages but i always felt those were for people who go down this track of marriage children like this really linear heteronormative track and i just i'm like well if if your destiny isn't to get married and have kids mm-hmm. what what does your retirement look like and it just felt that the view the I I still don't know. I'm I'm really ambivalent about retirement. We had a discussion on hmm. time at work recently and I I felt very strange about it because I'm like, well, it's I think it's for people who have families who who have kids and I'm and also because I've moved moved about a bit, I think I'm going to be working until I'm 70 and even hmm. then our careers are kind of messy now like we have sabbaticals and you know people start companies um and then they go and do something else and then they might go back to study like our lives are messy in the way that financial services make them they try and squeeze you into this kind of linear proposition mm-hmm. and i couldn't i couldn't relate to it i got really angry i was like i don't want to i don't want to put money in a pension for a future that i'm not sure I'm not sure what that is for me. Hmm. And, and it's taken many years for my mum to persuade me that the whole point of saving is for your own individual dreams. It's not just about the fucking pension. Yeah. It's actually about being able to afford travel or if something comes up <laughs> being able to fund an emergency. Like it's it's a resilience. It's not so you you have to kind of to me I have to park the advertising and the pressure and the propaganda from financial services mm. and actually think about what it is i want from my life yeah. and make sure i'm financially empowered to make that happen hmm okay and were you is is there ever a time when you're like um shit how am i going to make money you know uh fearing uh, the lack of it um yeah oh, i mean i've definitely had that in the past um hmm. probably i don't have I don't have that at the moment. I mean no, I mean I have been worried 
at times on furlough, but I've always, maybe this is, maybe this does sound arrogant, but I've always been able to find work fairly easily. Mm. I mean, I have, um, I don't, I'm not perfect. I'm also not delusional mm. and I work, I work my ass off. Um, yeah. And I care about my work mm. and I don't, I think there are people who are better at me than lots of things, but nobody actually cares more about their work than I do. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I'm not afraid of hustling. I've also, you know, I hustled in Canada. Um, there have been times when I've been made redundant. Um, mm-hmm. I've also faced some, again, when I've indicated that I've met some unhelpful recruiters. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think maybe I don't, I don't, I'm not really someone with a thick skin, but I think that did toughen me up. Okay. Uh, And so now I'm, it's like, it's, there's that, um, expression that I think is attributed to John Lennon, but I don't know if it's him. I don't Mm. know if it's Lennon actually said this, but it's something like everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. I love that. And that's so relevant for so many of us. It's not the end of the world. Things are still fine, you know. And I and I think even yeah. if I don't have work, there is so many things like creative projects that I haven't finished. Hmm. Things I'm gonna write. Like I would never be bored. Yeah. There is and and even if even if there was no paid work, hmm. I would I don't know, I would help people in their gardens or I would be well at the moment I would I'm helping pensioners out with IT issues hmm. um, or getting them onto Zoom or Oh really? There are always jobs to be done. Yes. Yeah. Not, yeah. What's that like working with pensioners, <laughs> getting them onto Zoom? I love that. Well, I, I joke that the, there used to be a show in the in the UK. I think it's like in the eighties or something um, that was called uh, "Last of the Summer Wine," and um, it was full of uh, uh, like elderly people with a dirty sense of humour. Uh, <sighs> And I feel like that's that's what my life has been in 2020. That I'm surrounded by friends of my mum's, um, some of whom have a dirty sense of humour, not all of them. Mm. Um, but but it's been really interesting because, of course, none of them were really you, well. I don't think any of them were using Zoom at the mm. start of the pandemic. Mm. They've had to, and and it's been entertaining for me to see their Tai Chi classes migrate to Zoom. Um, Silver Surfers. Nice. Uh, you know, the surface anyway um exercise um my mum is now taking a sing for fun group through zoom and that was she really was so reluctant to do it but yeah. it's it's amazing to like i help them i've been helping them for the last few weeks hmm. just up and sending out the invite yeah. and hear them laughing together and, and of course you can't sing in unison because of the is it the latency the delays the lag yeah yeah um but they they mute they mute themselves and then they sing along. But it's a chance to be together. Yeah, yeah. I think it's awesome. So, well, sorry, and like and another thing. Yes. So, um, there's a 93 year old lady in the in the village, and I think she was at some point having trouble getting onto these Zoom Tai Chi classes. Mm. And I think I think sometimes maybe the rest of the group thought, oh, she's old, or maybe she's she can't use the interface. But I, I, I observed her, you know, because I went over to help her, her get online. Nothing to do with the interface. Like, she's super smart. She's all over it. But it was yeah. an eyesight. You know, her eyesight was going. And none of these devices mm. um, are easily set up to help people with physical. You, you have to go through. Yeah. You have to get a specialist. It's not you know. accessible. Yeah. No, it's, it's mm. not accessible. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, she was super sharp. So, I mean, it's interesting that actually – none of this is about the elderly struggling with technology but yeah. not everybody's in- internet connection is is there and particularly if you've got an old an old like notebook or a, an old tablet mm-hmm. and an internet connection it's going to inevitably lead to a poor experience right um but how does that how does that make you feel to be actually able to because that smile that they pass at the end of it, you know, I, I made it, you know, this is because it's a big milestone. Technology is not easy. It's not for everyone. I mean, I think they they are pleased. I mean, there is, there is an element of delight there. I mean, I think, 
it, it's also a bit of a learning curve. And I think, um, I mean, I, I certainly sometimes feel a bit saturated with screen time. So you yeah. kind of this out. But I think it's better than nothing. Yeah. And it was, I think, for, for the first <clears throat> I think people thought that this would be coming to an end quicker than it has done and they were waiting and they you know there were people who didn't leave their houses or who I mean or who really didn't maybe didn't leave the garden Mm. they just they just weren't doing much but because I think everybody thought that um oh that you know they'll a vaccine or it'll somehow get easier and then it got of course it got worse yeah Um, and because it you know I, it would be easier if we had a government that underpromised and overdelivered, but we have a government that, re- that continuously kind of overpromises and underdelivers. So I think now people are like, okay, this is going to go on for a while. Let's do Zoom um, yeah. because things aren't going to change, not for not quickly. Uh, yeah, and, and people have adapted well, like you said. Uh, it's better than nothing, right? At least you have some sort of contact. Um, but speaking of government, you, I mean, the UK had the first uh, vaccination administered, was it yesterday? I think so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so headline That's about a big deal. Um, yeah, I mean, I, obviously there are, um, there are groups that are prioritized. I, again, you know, I kind of feel sort of excited about the vaccine and a bit nervous because it sort of feels rushed out. Um, mm. And we don't, we also don't know the longer term repercussions. Like, I mean, I yeah. think we don't know if you can get COVID more than once. We don't know how effective the vaccine will be. Um, so, so I think it's, I think it's exciting, but I think I'm also keen to see what the longer term um, hybrid future looks like with now mm. that we've had this. And I, when this first kicked off in, in, in March, I think it I was making all sorts of zombie apocalypse jokes and, and I guess the novelty is worn off now. <laughs> yeah, no more of those. But oh now that God. um I think it was just I suppose it did feel like almost you know that you could relate to those sci- those dystopian sci-fi films where you you wake up in hospital six weeks after a major event. And, it, and the cities are deserted. And I mean, but I, but I hope that even with the vaccine now, we know that something like this is possible and that we've actually got better defenses in place to safeguard, not against it, but of living with it, should this happen again. Mm. Um, I think that's, so I'm, what I don't want is for the government to just move on and pretend this didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. Fingers crossed. Things are back. Get, hopefully going to get back to normal. I don't know what, what that normal is anymore, but no one knows. And I mean, what are, what are things like in, in Toronto at the moment? I mean, I, I, how, what are the, I haven't looked at sort of case numbers and stuff. And Yeah, I mean, we hit our highest, I think it was yesterday, uh, 1925 cases in Ontario, and which is high for a population like, like ours, but uh, back in the second lockdown. And I mean, there are uh, morons out there who are protesting. There are idiots out, out here as well. But uh, by and large, I think it's been, it's been okay. 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 So not but, too many. But scary nevertheless. Um, like my family in India, they got, all of them got COVID. Um, including my house help. So thankfully they're all okay now, Uh, but it's scary, right? Because you can't fly, you know. Um, Though we have flights coming in and out of India. Uh, They've got like repatriation flights, but still, you know, and not like you can do anything there anyway. And were they, did they all make a complete recovery? Like there's no no complications? Okay. They're, They're okay now. Their, uh, I think it's their fourteenth or fifteenth day, and no symptoms anymore. So, I was telling them you got lucky. You know, a lot of people are dropping dead. You know, perspective, right? Yeah. So, I guess we've been, we've been, you know, in a lockdown in a way, ever since March, only going out for essential stuff. And even when we traveled a little locally, you know, when the cases were down. 
um just mostly outdoors we went to a petting farm uh took took our nieces there they enjoyed so much but uh, it's going to get over at some point so we're trying not to be reckless yeah um so it's- their their lives their businesses or you know jobs that, that kind of thing badly um like i was getting freelance work up until april i was working with you know restaurants doing their social media photography and video and it's i've had to change paths i'm working on something right now that should hopefully be pandemic friendly um but uh, all in all businesses have really suffered like we've had so many restaurants closed down so many businesses closed down around us and it's been hard e-commerce is flourishing but mom and pop shops and stores and stuff are really suffering we went to the mall the other day the first time since march and it was there's no one there literally no one there which is good in a way because it's lockdown right so but yeah I mean, I, I see that sometimes with some of our town centres where, mm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's made its way across the Atlantic, but yeah, a couple of big high street department stores have gone. Yeah. Um, like, like the number of vacant, um, you know, um, shop spaces yeah. uh, has increased. Uh, but I, I don't, I, it's easy for me to say when I'm working, but I also hope, I mean, I was saying this, a friend and I were talking about this the other night and I do think that Britain will get worse before it gets better that I actually think we're probably in for tougher times yeah. that it'll cripple our town centers hmm. um I think jobs will be sort of hemorrhage but yeah. um and maybe maybe if if we can stop obsessing about our past which I feel that Britain is I mean we we're only capable of looking behind us I mean there's mm. no future. um but uh, if we can get you know sort of past our own assholes then maybe we've got a chance I don't know if it was in Scotland but um uh, what was the news where there was a massive like a snowstorm or like a th- snow thunder or something oh <coughs> what was that Yeah, I can't I can't remember where that was. That was certainly not anywhere near where we are. Um hmm. no snow whatsoever here. Um hmm. okay. but yeah, there was um what was it? I can't what it was. But we yeah, it was was a mixture of s- sort of snow and extreme wind or something like a yeah. Hmm. Was, yeah. How far are you from Edinburgh? Um I think it's about 90 miles. um what is that like a uh, 150 i think it's yeah something like that um okay. so yeah i guess in terms of well probably relative to canada it's nothing at all mm, um, yeah but here it is significant enough that edinburgh gets snow and we don't oh okay <laughs> we get rain <coughs> lots of it yes yes a lot of it and uh, we have mm. uh, yeah, overflowing rivers um mm. yeah um that's exciting as it gets but it's very yeah it's it's still beautiful i personally miss the rain we every time someone says it's kind of dark and gloomy here when it's raining i have just one explanation as to why we like shreya and i in particular love the rains and it comes from you know we'd have super hot summers in delhi when i say super hot i mean like 45 to 48 degrees even some days and then you would look forward to monsoon that's always in our heads now it's kind of it's inscribed in our memories that you know okay because we used to look forward to it we now love the rains so every time it rains i think it's not personally i think it's not great but a lot of people have problems with it uh, well well when when it is okay to travel you guys will have to come over to scotland and Cannot we wait. Will all the rain um that you've ever wished for Cannot wait. I love that place. Absolutely love it. A few more things before I let you go. Do you have any regrets? Do I have any regrets? Um no actually. Um I d- I don't have any. There are definitely things I've learned from, but no regrets. Mm. I genuinely don't. I mean, um there are I think like with things like moving to Canada or Denmark, going back to study, taking different jobs. Mm. Um 
for sure there are things that I've done I wish I'd done differently but I learned from all of them so I don't I don't actually regret any of it I love the optimism I don't I, I don't even I don't even feel like I'm being that optimistic I'm just like I, I just feel very pragmatic about it like I did hmm. some stuff some of it some of it was stressful hmm. but I it's everything you've done I mean makes you everything you are so yeah you, you had a question like do I like myself or am I happy and I'm like hmm. oh you know there's room for improvement but yeah. it's yeah yeah yes and it's a tough it's a tough one to answer it's evolving right everything is is an evolving process so um, you know i could listen mm. back to this recording and i'll be like oh i just i don't want to watch myself don't want to hear myself um there are things i've written where i'm like oh you know it's kind of clunky or wasn't very eloquent but but you grow Mm. Yeah. You, you know what that's it's interesting you mentioned that. I have the same fear around even when I was starting this podcast I had the same fear like what if I sound like a total idiot, you know? The whole world's going to see it. But that I think again stems from uh my fear of validation. Like I want to make everyone happy, but people are not going to like you anyway. You know, it's totally fine. I mean if you're making I mean some a couple of people have said to me over the years that you know mm. can't please everybody so there's no point in yeah. trying i think if you know which people you're really aiming for just exactly. do what brings them joy yeah absolutely and and you're doing great so you're going to watch this recording and you're going to be like wow that's me that and sounds I, like i know my mom awesome. yeah so i'll just put it out and I, and and she can watch it so now. she's going to enjoy this anyway she'll love it yeah what is she like as a person um which is probably a lot of course, i mean we probably share quite a lot of characteristics mm. uh, i think she's she's warm she's self effacing um she's smart um i think probably less direct than me um <laughs> shock um yeah i don't know i mean i i think i know her too well so it's mm. difficult for me to But she's I mean I think what I like is that she's quite open and I'm quite proud of how she's adjusted this year because obviously she went from being from losing her life partner to um also she was also a full-time carer so it was a massive lifestyle shift mm. in terms of suddenly the focus of life was not about my stepdad it was about her so mm. um and of course she wasn't she's I mean she's pretty cool with online banking and she's you know she's comfortable with a lot of things but seeing her conquer zoom um and uh you know do more of this stuff um yeah. you know was was really exciting it's um, heartwarming yeah yeah um so mm. yeah i'm proud of her if bills were not a concern what say you have everything covered you've got a few million here and there what would you be doing with your life I would have my own company and my own startup. Um yeah, yeah. I would. I'm broadly interested in the space of looking at improv, looking at taking improv techniques online hmm. to improve how people <laughs> communicate with each other. And I suppose I maybe it was inspired by horrible online dating experiences and also social networking and feeling like so much so much of so many of the social networking platforms are based on hudos um and on image um and on bias and what would what would a kind of uh, what would a a platform look like where you could only score mm. the interaction and you knew nothing about the profile of the person you were interacting with so you couldn't um bias um your perception hmm. um by their accent their attractiveness yeah um, their skin color or that kind of stuff so i'm i'm interested in that space but i don't know what yeah. i don't know what the hook is to get to get strangers to interact hmm. um, in that way i i haven't yeah. of that to to work in progress fascinating rachel this has been a lot of fun and just before we close is there any message for people that you love um 
message for the universe anything any closing thoughts well probably if there's anyone i love watching this i hope they're not offended by anything i've said i mean um no i mean the people i love know i love them and i i no i just i really obviously with canada i really hope to get over next year it'll be five years since i've left yeah um, I suppose I, do, I feel like you do need to actually see people to keep that friendship alive. So of course I worry that the longer I'm away that people will forget and those friendships will die. But um, but I, I don't, even though I've left Canada, I'm not, not letting go of that life. And I would still, I, I'm still really keen to get over. So I'm just hoping mm. that, oh, like everyone everywhere, that 2021 will be a very different year, but like touching all the wood and keeping everything crossed. And, Knock on wood, yeah. Well, I just feel like rambled at you for I don't know two hours. What? Um, how can how can we help? How can we, me, and the internet help you? Like, what what do you need in twenty twenty one, apart from rain? <laughs> um, just I guess to be able to get back to the old normal, uh, meet people again. I miss hosting people a lot Shreya and I you know you know how much we love hosting so that's the one thing that I really want back maybe you know some travel if things were to improve in terms of you know the vaccination and whatnot but aside from that uh, I just want to continue doing what I'm doing right now um, you know try and talk to more people I'm actually meeting Monica day after really yeah oh, amazing <laughs> okay yes <laughs> Is watching that doesn't know Monica. Monica's pretty awesome. She is awesome. She is a live wire, and I cannot wait for that. So yeah, just continue um, trying to build my own uh, expression, my own personal brand through YouTube, and um, yeah, 2021 is going to be better than 2020 for sure. Well, I'm I'm happy to send you cases of Iron Brew or um, Scottish. <sighs> or whatever other terrible food you need from this island shortbread sorry Brit short the shortbread cookies yes, yes I can, I can. Oh my God, they were, we've i found a scottish store here and we go there frequently let's just say that okay okay, okay. Uh, look but, out by the way you hmm. said that you'd you'd switched um track in the pandemic so um are you are you able to talk about what you're moving towards or is it secret uh okay i okay it's not a secret per se it's going to be something related to e-commerce okay that narrows it down <laughs> yeah and then once i uh, stop the record button then i can maybe tell you a little more but um but yeah i mean it's going to be some something related to selling products online Okay. And that's why I said it's a bit somewhat pandemic friendly, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just felt like uh, jobs were not, I don't want to say they're not for me, but just wasn't happy at all. It is really difficult working for people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, like even when I was applying for jobs, I got, I know it's tough times right now, but I was getting hundreds of rejections by the day. So I just felt like there are things that I know um, and that I can use for my own brand. So why not, right? Yeah. So I'm giving this new thing a shot. Hopefully it materializes soon. But uh, until then, just like I said, continue having these meaningful conversations. This is something that I really look forward to. But uh, thank you. This has been phenomenal. I'm really happy you made time. And uh, hopefully we can do this again and hopefully in person next year. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I've I've always got time for you. I mean, I think that you and Shreya are wonderful and you like it's Thank been you. a pleasure. So um, anytime. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go now. Uh, thank you again for all your time and uh, say hello to mom. <laughs> I will. I will. I know um, she's going to love watching this. <laughs> no she will she'll find it highly entertaining yeah. uh, now that she's been mentioned a few times 
Um, but uh, no, let me know if um, I can help anything. And otherwise, I hope to see you with a suitcase of shortbread next year. Oh, you know what? Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, just you know where I am. Um, let me know if I can help with anything. Absolutely, stay in touch. Absolutely, yeah. And um, say hi to Shreya. I will. I, I will. I will see you on the social medias. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, just and we'll we'll chat about the jewelry bit soon. Yeah, yeah secret of Top top secret. Okay. Okay. All right. See you soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>